going to start the recording. Okay, so we're making our perfect pomegranates. And if you have to come back later and watch this, or if you have to go tonight because something is happening, we'll record this and I'll send you all a link to the recording. So you'll have that. So just in case if you have to go or something happens. So, okay, so this is the card we're making that's the most complicated. Ooh, ah, ooh. <laughs> so this is a really cool fold. It's a box fold um, and we're using some of the new desert paper and then some new desert um god what is this stuff called i, I won't remember i don't remember anything y'all i for some reason this new catalog isn't sticking in my head desert delicate desert is the designer series paper and then dry brushed metallic is the shiny paper. This is what it looks like in full. It's very shiny. <laughs> uh, but in small pieces, it's manageable. <laughs> so um, I'm going to show you how. Are we to supposed to have the paper that's got the flowers on it? No, we're stamping no? that. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, she says. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> I told you we were starting with the hardest one first. We're going to knock it out. So we, we got this. So if okay. we don't actually get it all done tonight, it's okay. We can go back and do it later. Hey. A okay. And if you just want to watch tonight, I have another lady who she just watches and then she comes back later and makes it. So if that's, if that's what you want to do, that's fine too. So, um, all right. So this starts off like a normal card base and then it has some folds that are already scored in for you. And so you're going to fold just that one flat back and then glue that piece. So see how I like, it has like one, two, three hinges. We're just gonna slide it down. So we can only see two hinges and we have one piece that's tucked behind. Okay, that's the easiest way I can think of describing it. And I'll show you why. Because I can find my glue, I promise. Oh. <laughs> oh. So I'm going to use a stronger glue on this. You could use um, Tombow, you could use tear and tape, or I'm going to use seal plus because it's our stronger adhesive. And I'm going to put that behind this smaller flap only because this, this card might have a bit of, um, like there might be a bit of traction or a bit of, um, you know, pressure on it. Right. So I'm going to seal that. Once I've done that, it makes the box. Okay. So when you hold it to the side, so if you need to hold it to the side to kind of see how the box forms, then you can see that. And it What's should not be level, right? The box. Say what? The box should be level. It should be. Yes. Because the flap is not long enough to go all the way to the fold. So Co correct. Yeah. So that's why you just have the two flaps down and that'll show you exactly how to keep it level. So if you have two flaps down, then that'll make it just right. What's cool about this card is that it folds down and it fits in a normal size envelope. So that's a really nice feature. So oh, okay. and kind of play with it before you glue it, you know? So, all right. So then adhering the designer series paper is easy. Um, we're just going to, I'm going to do it kind of to the side because it's easier for me. Um, so it has a small border all the way around it. So we're going to put our designer series paper down. We've got our kind of desert mountainy looking background in the background. And then we're going to put our two very shiny pieces of designer series paper here on these flaps. And you can use whatever adhesive you want. Everybody has their adhesive preference. Okay. So now we've made, got a basic form, right? For our card. And then we're gonna stamp on 
our piece of white. I would recommend don't glue it down yet, just in case you totally botch it up and you need to flip it over. Okay, so, so we're just gonna stamp first, okay? And we're gonna stamp, um, if I can remember. <laughs> I can remember, I can remember. So Calypso Coral and Evening Evergreen. So we're going to stamp our big kind of branchy piece in evening evergreen. I thought it was a nice kind of darker green for this. And then we're going to need our small flower stamp and our big flower stamp. But you can use whatever green, whatever pinkish hued color you've got. <laughs> um, this um, big um, branch piece with the leaves, it does fit on a D block. You just have to kind of squeeze it on there side to side. So it does fit, but it's, it's pretty tight. So. All right, so we're just gonna stamp our greenery. I like to stamp it a little bit off the top. And this is a distinctive stamp. So it's meant to have darker and lighter spots. So don't think that something's wrong with your stamp or something's wrong with you or something's wrong with your ink. <laughs> it's meant to look like that. So it's a-okay if it looks like that. Sometimes that freaks people out. All right. I'm going to clean as I go, which is kind of wild for me, but hey, you know. All right. And then, and then I'm going to stamp the little flower um, in Clipso Coral on my branch. And it's kind of where there's a single branch that sticks out and there's a double. And we're gonna stamp it by the double. Ooh, that's really dark. That looks terrible. All right, lovely. Um, if your ink pad's really, really juicy, I would recommend stamping off, which apparently mine is very, very juicy. Um, but it's fine, it's done, I will move on. <laughs> And then there's a very tiny stamp that's the little centerpiece for the um, flower. And so you'll wanna get that and stamp that. There, now it looks complete. It looks a little better. That's a very juicy stamp pad. I have gotten a new Calypso Coral <laughs> that I have not used enough. All right. Okay, now this flower is stamped on our scratch piece of paper. So I gave you guys like an extra piece of paper and I actually used my sponge dauber to add the ink to it because I remember when I was doing this card, my clips of coral was too dark and I actually stamped it in petal pink and then I added a little bit of clips of coral at the top just to give it some color variation. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So what I did is I got my petal pink and you don't have to do this, but it's just if you want to, you know, be a little extra. I stamped my flower in petal pink and then I took my sponge dauber and I added a little bit of Calypso coral, just a little bit, not a lot, towards the top. And then I stamped it on my scratch piece of paper. And then when I cut it out, then it gives a lot more depth, right, to the flower. So it looks really fancy. And then I think I went even extra. And I think I put some Winka Stella on it. 
because I was really, by the time I got to this card, y'all, I was feeling real special. So, all right. So that makes it like super, super shiny and super, super exciting. So Anita, I know you're doing my 12 days of Christmas class. And you know, I taped all that ahead of time. Have you hit the 12th day? Have you hit the 12th day yet? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. So you got your wink of Stella? <laughs> I got what? Did you get your wink of Stella? That was your 12th day, right? Wasn't that the last day's gift? In the 12th? I, I couldn't understand you. I think it was the um, sparkle pin. Yeah, yeah, the wink of Stella. I like oh, this. wink of Stella. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, but you know when I opened it and I took out the little black yeah. ring and all, and then I yeah. put it back together, it seemed like a bunch of that gold stuff. It just squished right out. So yeah, I don't know. You, yeah, you have to be like it doesn't take a lot to get stuff out. Like you don't have to squish very hard. Um, it seems and, to come out around the tube, though, not out the brush point. Oh, it so all linked under the tube, under the. Let me show. Yeah, yeah, like right, right there. It all linked, leaked into that. Yeah, it's okay. It'll keep pushing out the tip eventually. Oh, okay. So you'll see it kind of feed out here, and then it'll come all the way out the end. Oh, you know, okay. What I, I realized. Supposed to do that or not? Yeah, I what I realized was. Before. I had a, I had a, I had an original Wink of Stella from like when we first got Wink of Stella and I hadn't gotten a new one since the beginning. So when I got this new one, I was like, oh, it's even fancier now. Um, all right. So I'm just cutting my flower out. You don't have to do this. You could just stamp it straight on that other sheet if you wanted to, you know, I'm just being, like I said, this is the quote unquote harder card. So this is the extra card. Um, it's just a little it's just me being special so but by this point I was really feeling the glitz and the glamour so and I think this is a really fun fold I really enjoyed this one I actually did another project this week with it too so okay all right hold on to your scrap piece of white because we'll need this later and you'll have plenty of extra so okie dokie and then I need to stamp my sentiment on here. Oh, I just really made a mess. Okay. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of yellow. So I'm going to use my um, blending brush and I'm going to come in and I'm going to use, I'm using Daffodil Delight, but you can do whatever you want. And I'm just adding some color here, kind of behind where I'm going to put the, um, the flower just because I think it's I think it looks pretty and I think it softens the whole thing up and I think it adds a lot of dimension okay I have a question about those brushes there you're using yeah I've never, I've never used one but a friend gave me a couple mm -hmm. uh can you wash them out you can use them with another color you can. Yep. I like to, um, because I don't want to have any mold or anything grow in here. Um, and so I am really careful with, um, like I just have one for yellows, one for pinks, one for okay. blues. Like I just have them kind of designated by color, but I have another friend who just washes them. So, and so uh, when, you, when you designate them by color, you, then you don't ever wash them. No, I don't. And the, I just, and the ink, the ink doesn't get hard or anything mm -mm, like that. Mm -mm, no, and I just kind of no. rub it off on a scratch piece of paper, and it's fine. You get some of it off. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other colors besides Calypso Coral would work? If you don't have Calypso Coral, um, so the Cajun Craze, you can use Cajun Craze and stamp off quite a bit. Um, so stamp off a couple of times and then Cajun craze is in the same family. And I didn't know that, but Cajun craze is in this like family. And then petal pink is also like in this paper color stack as well. So, okay. And then I'm just going to put this on. All right. Good. All right. So I'm just going to put a little dimensional under here. And then get my flower where I want it. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. I'm actually going to make this one for my mom. And so I'm stamping a different sentiment on this one than I did on the other one. 
And I'm going to stamp that in, um, in the green because I think it'll show off better. So. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. So. I was making those little jar, shaker jars, bottles that you gave in the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. This afternoon. And oh my God, I had glue and ink everywhere. <laughs> it's like, I, oh. Well, that's when you know it's been a fun crafting day if you have glue and ink everywhere, right? So, <laughs> um. But those were really cool. <laughs> those are cool. Um, and when yours were laying on the table in the video, yeah, they actually looked like it was water. Yeah, like those little bead things. I mean, it was so cool in the video because it actually looked like water. Yeah, I was trying to see if I still had that one. I might have given it away already. That one looked really cool. I was impressed with it. Um, I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, this one actually. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. Like this one turned out pretty much perfect. Um, I didn't. I don't think I put enough beads in mine though. This is quite a few. I was surprised how many I put in here, and then I thought it looked pretty cool. So yeah. that was fun. So that was a fun one. All right. So now I've just glued it to my piece of pale papaya. And I'm gonna glue it on my card base. So I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna kind of fold it how I would put it in my envelope, right? So I'm gonna like, you know, like it would go in my envelope. And then that's how I'm gonna make sure that I've got this, you know, spaced just right. So I'm just gonna put glue on the bottom, like two strips on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna do two strips of glue on the bottom. And then that will help glue it to the front panel of my card. And I'm just gonna make sure it's as square as I can get it. And there we go, there's our hard card, okay? So that's definitely the most difficult card of all of them. Hang tight kinda, with me. I kind of missed where you put, did you use both pieces of the foil paper? I did. I put one here and one here. Oh, There's behind. One. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when it's sitting up on the mantle or, you know, wherever they're displaying it, then it'll have a little bit of light and color. So, okay. yeah. So, okay. So that's our hard one. Good job, team. Way to go. The other ones aren't as hard, I promise. <laughs> All right. I was ambitious. What can I say? Okay. So our next one is also in a white envelope. And it is, um, you either have a crumb cake or a gray granite. I don't know what this fold is called, Kathleen. Um, <laughs> well, it's technically used for a pop-up card. I do a lot of pop-up cards and you fold it like that to make it pop up when you open your envelope, but it's called, yeah. it's just a box. It's like a box fold. Yeah, I, what I call it for pop-ups. Yeah, and I, I think that I've seen people doing something like this on like our demonstrator planning group for like other paper, like other demonstrators, Stampin' Up! demonstrators. But I just did the math myself and figured it out. I was feeling real, real bold and proud of myself that day. Normally I have to look it up and read someone's measurements and stuff. But this one, I was like, I can figure this out. So I have no, yeah, idea. Easy. <laughs> no idea. So some of you have a gray granite card base and some of you have crumb cake. And for that, I apologize. Um, but apparently I ran out of crumb cake, um, which it is one of my favorite cardstock colors. So um, this is card number two, and it's just a lot of stamping. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to do this. Oh, that was what I was going to cut. <laughs> so everybody but me has this um, <laughs> oval piece cut out. Oh, well, that was our dog. That's the loudest I've heard him bark in a long time. All right. 
Let me cut this real quick. So this is from the um, framed, no, I don't know what it's called. What's it called? Fabulous Frames is the die set. I knew I'd have to look it up. Um, but it cuts, it oval cuts, and it cuts the inside and the outside. If you want to do white embossing powder on this, I just did white ink because I was crafting because I was just moving fast the other day. Um, but I think that the white, if you have white embossing powder, it'll show up a lot better. So just FYI. Um, but let me show you how to do the stamping part. So the stamping, I'm going to kind of keep that in frame and let this one out. The stamping, I actually got my pencil and I used my pencil to mark the top and the sides of this little piece, because when I didn't do this, and I'll show you, and it's in pencil, so you can erase it. It's no big deal. Um, once you've stamped, you can even go back over and erase it. But if I, when I didn't have this oval here, I was stamping everything too close together. Um, I used sweet sorbet as my red for this, which is might not be a red you have, and that's okay. You could use Poppy Parade. Um, and in fact, this might be Poppy Parade that I used over here, but I'm using Sweet Sorbet now. So, you know, go with what you have. Um, and I think I used Shaded Spruce for the green. Again, pick a green, pick a red, pick two that look nice together. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's okay. You could even use real red and it would be okay as well. So, um, okay. So we've got our flower and what we're going to do is we're just going to stamp it and I'm going to stamp one like full strength. And then I might stamp another one like second generation, second strength, right? And then I'm gonna come in and I might do maybe one here and I might angle it a little different and then I'll do that. And so I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna just stamp a bunch, but I wanna stamp to fill the white space on the outside. And I'm just gonna kind of go around and randomly stamp it and I'm not gonna pay too much attention to what is happening because I'm going to go back and I'll fill it with some of the leaves too. So I've just got a whole bunch of messy flowers and it'll look cute, I promise. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab these um, other leaves, these kind of bigger leaves. And I'll grab shaded spruce just for fun. Why not? It's a bright, fun green. And so I'll stamp a couple of the two leaf pieces. I know I'm crazy. I like to stamp my and then I'll stamp a few of the three leaf ones. Because why not? Again, all you're doing is just getting a whole lot of coverage on here, remembering that you're going to have a, you know, an oval behind here. Now, if it really bugs you that the pencil lines are there, you can just come back in and erase those. If that makes you feel better. I don't think that anybody will see them. <laughs> and then I glued down first the um, piece that you have. Y'all's bar piece is long enough just to glue down flat. Mine is not, so I'm actually going to cut mine in half 
and I'm just going to kind of space mine out a little bit. So if you need to do that or you want to do that, you don't have to though, yours should be long enough that you don't have to do that. I just ran out of paper. <laughs> like I said, there was a run on crumb cake in my house. So. And then I'm gonna take my fun little oval and I'm gonna use Tombow for this because I think it's easier. And I'm gonna glue this down with a little bit of wet glue. Okay. Approximately there. <laughs> and then this piece, when I've stamped it, I'll pop it up with dimensionals. I'm not gonna heat emboss on camera because I think that'll be too loud and too wild. Um, plus it drives the dog crazy. He thinks I'm trying to blow dry him, which I'm not, <laughs> but it does sound very similar. <laughs> oh, he's nuts. And then I'm gonna stamp and I'm gonna, nope, that is definitely the wrong color. We do not want green flowers, we want red flowers. I'm going to stamp maybe one and then I might stamp off one. No, stamped off is too, too light. Okay. I think I'm going to keep mine full strength. All right, there we go. So stamp a couple of flowers. Um, if you need to stamp the little inner piece, you can do that. Stamens. And then you're gonna fussy cut those and then you're just gonna layer them. So this one I glued flat, this one I glued flat and this one I put up with dimensionals. And then I just tied a little bow with my twine and stuck it kind of on the edge there. So Kathleen, you struggle with the distinctive stamp sets, <laughs> tend to put not buy these. Yeah, good, that's awesome. Yay, I'm so glad. Yeah, Kathleen, the distinctive stamp sets, I think, especially in the beginning, people were like, I don't understand. It's not stamping even. I'm not getting, and I think one, I think they've gotten better at it and now it's like patented and everything. Um, but I think that now people understand like the variation is supposed to be there. Um, and as long as your ink pad isn't too juicy, it should come out just right you know, and that's the, that's the goal is to have, but if it's too juicy, you can stamp a second time. You could also take a credit card and swipe the top of your stamp, <laughs> your stamp pad, and basically lift a bunch of ink off, and then that'll make it less juicy. So you have choices to unjuicify your stamp sets. Um, but yes, um, drier ink pads are actually better for the distinctives, which is kind of funny. So I'm so glad. That's awesome. So the distinct event ink pack um, sets are the ones that give the shady thing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And they're marked in the catalog with a distinctive. There's like a little marker next to them. I'm trying to I see. There was there was one in one of the paper pumpkin boxes that kind of stamped like that, and I kept trying to stamp it and stamp it. <laughs> Because uh, I didn't know what those were. Okay. And it has this little tiny mark that says distinctive next to it. And this is one of the ones in the spring catalog. It's a globe. It's really beautiful. Oh, we could have used this for Marianne's project on Pangea. Darn it. All right. I just thought of that. Man, one day too late. And thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. I think this one's really pretty. Um, lots and lots of stamping and layers. Oh, and even in this one, there's even some of these little guys that are stamped. The little stamens are stamped off on the corners and the sides. So lots of stamping, 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 stamping on this one. Very stampy, stampy. Um, okay, I'm going to put this one together later because um, I think this is reasonable. You guys understand how it goes together. So I'm, I feel comfortable with that. So I'm going to put that over here and I'm going to show you guys the next one. We've got two left and these are pretty simple though, but I definitely need to clean my stamps because that red is 
that's a red. Like that's going to get everywhere, and I'm going to end up with red all over my and everywhere else. All right, very good. So, oh, and the green is nice and green too, making all sorts of messes. Okay, good. Okie dokie. All right. Okay, so we have the two green envelopes left. So the two green envelopes are, um, these are actually um, cards, note cards and envelopes that were available in the last celebration. And I happened to hoard a lot of them. Um, yay me. And so now we can all play with them. <laughs> so um, these two are some pretty simple layers, but not, not super hard. So I'm gonna show you this one first. I think this is the next one in your layers. It's a blue card base. So when you see up close, it's a very, very light blue. It's pool party. So you'll see, and it's got this really pretty die cut piece. So when you pull it out, you have your light blue, and then you do have some pearls in there. Don't let your pearls fall, right? We can't, can't lose our pearls. If you, if you lose your pearls, it's okay. You can always replace them. <laughs> but um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp the flowers in the top left, and then we're gonna stamp a little sentiment down here, whatever little sentiment you want. And then I just popped the whole thing up with mini dimensionals. So the colors I used on this one was soft succulent and polished pink. And the reason I keep using different colors is because I wanna show you guys that this stuff can be stamped in any reddish and greenish combo. Like I'm trying to show you that this is a pretty versatile stamp set and that you could really do this in, in any, any way you want. So I'm going to stamp the flowers first in pink in the top left. And I got some ink on the edge. So I'm gonna try to wipe that off so I don't make a mess. All right, so I'm gonna stamp one flower and then I'm gonna stamp another flower. All right, there we go. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add some greenery. I'm going to stamp a little bit going up here and then a little bit to the left. And then stamp these guys. So you're just trying to create like a cluster, you know, of leaves and flowers in the corner. Here we go, good enough. And then a couple of these sentiments fit really well over here in the corner. Um, so, you know, you can try if you've got other stamp sets, I'm sure you've got other ones. Um, I liked the let's cheer you up. Um, I thought that was a, a nice sentiment. So I'm just gonna stamp that over in the corner over here. And then you can sprinkle your pearls as you as you wish. Um, but I will show you that the many dimensionals actually work really well. This is a background. It's called the split split card textures dies. There's two backgrounds, um, and one of them has like kind of a crosshatch pattern, and then one of them has this, which is like a more floral look. And the little mini dimensionals fit perfect behind these little clusters here. So that's what I was able to use to kind of support the card, um, you know, and support this side of it. And I didn't do one on every 
you know, piece, but, you know, quite a few of them. And then I just used like regular dimensionals on the rest of it. If you put the card, if, the, if you put the top one down flat, do you think it'd look okay? Yeah, I think I don't have be, a lot of those dimensional things. Yeah, I think it I would need be, to buy some. But. Yeah, I think it'd be fine. You do get some in your paper pumpkin, so you might have some left over from a paper. Yeah, pumpkin. I've been using. <laughs> uh -huh. I need to order some, but I haven't yeah. done it yet. You know, it's funny. They're like four dollars, right? But it's like one of the things that like people don't you, order. I forget. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. And if you get them in your paper pumpkin, then yeah, it's easier to. Oh, I use all of those, even the ones around the edge. Oh, know? yeah. <laughs> Got to use your edges for sure. So I think it's fine. And I think you'll actually see a little bit more of the pattern, you know, behind it. So, so that's a fun, easy card. Snaps for that one. I like easy stamping, right? I told you we're getting easier. So, whew. Um, all right. And then this one is our last one. I'm glad you record this because there's no way I could keep up. I know it's okay. Um, that's why I record it so that you can come back to it. And then I'll send you some nice pictures of all the cards tomorrow too. So you can have those to reference. I'm not making a PDF for this one. Um, cause I'm just, um, no. out, of, out, of, out of time, out of time. Um, but it's okay. All right. So for this one, I used, <laughs> do you like this? I'm trying to remember all the colors I used. I told you I used every like red greenish combo around. I think I used like old olive, no, pear pizzazz and rich razzleberry and crumb cake. Um, no, blackberry bliss. Yeah. So blackberry bliss and pear pizzazz and a little bit of crumb cake. Crumb cake is really just this like spat spattle piece over here. I don't know. So, um, okay. So, oh, I have two. Oh God, I hope everybody got theirs because I have two. Uh oh, maybe. Huh. All right, I hope you got yours. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> if you didn't, let me know. I'll mail it to you. Um, okay. So Are you we're supposed gonna... to have two. You said. No, you're only supposed to have one. I just apparently have two. So oh, who, knows, okay. who knows why, um, but oh well. All right. So we're going to use, ooh, we're going to use in the stamp set. I wanted to try to use all the pieces I could. So we're going to use, I just didn't use the big pomegranate. Sorry. I like these little guys. They're cute. So we're going to use pretty much everything in here. So for crumb cake, we're going to do the little splatters on coming, kind of coming to the side. So we've got our big splatter and we're just gonna stamp this down in the corner. And then we're done with that. There we go. And then um, we're gonna stamp our branch up in the top and I actually stamped it twice. So I stamped it once full strength and once partial. Just to, again, to give it a little bit of dimension. And I just literally moved it like a little and a little and that's it. And then we're going to we still have that scrap piece of paper somewhere, right? <clears throat> Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Who knows where mine went? Mm. Please tell me this occurred. This happens to other people. Oh, here it is. I'm not the only person that loses paper on their craft space, right? I can't be. All right. So we've got our pomegranates. And you'll notice that the pomegranates, they grow this way upside down, it looks like to me. Um, so we're used to kind of holding a pomegranate with the little opening up, but they actually grow the other way. So if you're wondering why everybody is stamping this image this way, that is why. Yeah. All right. So 
Blackberry Bliss. Which is a really pretty color. And we're gonna stamp our. So remember with photopolymer to kind of hold it for a second, let the ink roll off, then you should get a really nice clear image with a lot of shading, which is really cool. And then you've got these little seeds that go on the inside. So when you stamp the seed one, you just need to make sure they do match up. There's a kind of a thinner seed side and a thicker seed side. So just make sure that you get that, the seed to, to line up. But you should get a really nice stamped image. And then we're gonna fussy cut that out, put it up with some dimensionals. If you don't want to, that's okay too. If you don't wanna fussy cut it and you just wanna stamp it straight on here, that's okay too. Um, and then you've got a little bar that you can do a sentiment on. And then I did a double twine bow. So I took this piece of twine and I just kind of doubled it up on one end. And then I tied a bow. If you don't like tying bows, you don't have to do this. It's okay. Um, but you're gonna pull the other end through and then you're just gonna very carefully adjust it until you get it how you like it. So remember with twine, if you tighten too quickly, you're gonna get it to curl. So see how I keep it nice and loose and open while I adjust it? Then when I've got the ears just how I want them, then I tighten it and then it doesn't twist on me because twine can twist if you tighten it too fast. So then, right, we'll have a nice little double bow for our card. And I'm going to pick fun sentiment to go on here. Um, but I really do love um, this stamp set and the sentiments in it. Um, I think it's a, it's a great set um, and it's fun to have, you know, I don't use any of these floral images. <laughs> I just use the sentiments. <laughs> It's okay, I, I'm a font snob, we know that, so. Um, okay, any questions about any of the projects before I stop the recording? Yay, good. Good to hear none, I appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording and stop.